so many men as they age or even younger men with a, maybe binge drinking or whatever your lifestyle is may uh, experience increased belly fat. Is this something to be concerned about besides the aesthetic appearance? Is it something from a health point of view? And how does TRT uh, have its effect on this and what other things can be done to reduce it? We're going to discuss it after this, so keep watching. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of Balance My Hormones, where we help men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please press like and subscribe so you don't miss future content. Well, I'm here today uh, again with Dr. Uh, Rudy uh, Eberwein, who's here and uh, as a doctor from the Medical Health Institute. Uh, he's an expert at TRT, mm -hmm. and uh, we've had some really good discussions while we're here in Miami. And, and today we wanted to address the, the topic of, you know, belly fat. What is it? And you know what should we do uh, to reduce it, and what can TRT do to reduce it, and other things. So, uh, hello again, welcome. <laughs> Very good. Another subject that I have passion about. I have passion about so yeah, many things, are. right? That's really good. <laughs> so, belly fat. This is the dangerous fat. You know, we have an obesity epidemic in the U.S. and in the world. It's happening, but it's not your weight that's important. It's your VAT. It's not even your fat. Oh, it's your fat. It's your fat. Okay. For those in the UK, we're not talking about value added tax. <laughs> Good one. Yes. I had to pay that when I went to Europe. So that, it's visceral adipose tissue. That is belly fat. It's a scientific term for belly fat. But that's the important thing we need to talk about. The BMI, the body mass index, that's how we measure whether somebody is underweight, overweight, or obese. It's an outdated um, uh, measurement. We need to look at the VAT, the, the, the visceral adipose tissue, because we do have patients who are skinny fat. They don't have any muscle mass. Their weight is okay. Their BMI is decent. But then their belly, and you see the belly fat there. So that's belly fat. That VAT is a very active, um, it's a very active, um, so that VAT, it's, a, it's actually a, a, a full. It's like a separate organ. It's an endocrine organ that secretes a lot of inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis alpha, TNF, IL-6, plus all those adipokines that are bad for our health. So it's not just what you look like, it's not just what you weigh. If you have VAT, you have higher risk of chronic diseases. So VAT is closely associated, high risk of diabetes, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, and different forms of cancer. So, uh, you know, the metabolic syndrome, yep. which is an association of those different um, um, abnormalities, if you have an enlarged waist size, abnormalities in your lipid, blood sugar, and, and hypertension, and blood pressure, those four things together are called metabolic syndrome, and the, the sum of those four is much higher correlates with a much higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So when I see a patient come to me, and they may be their weight may not be that, that high, BMI of 27, 28, or, or whatever their weight is, if you have that, you need to take action. And this is where testosterone replacement plays a big role. Testosterone, the studies are very, very strong on this. Testosterone has a very beneficial effect on the cardiometabolic profile. So on testosterone replacement, you most likely lose a good amount of VAT. You lose inches off of your waist, your lipid profile Im improves, you, and your blood pressure tends to improve because you tend to lose weight. So when my patients come to me, I go into, I measure their VAT. So we have a, the way you do that, you measure the, the waist circumference. Anything above 40 for men or 35 for women is part of the metabolic syndrome. But even 36 to 30, 38 for men, that's too high. We need to get you into that, you know, 36 or less, 35, 34, to really decrease um, that VAT. Um, and, and the way we do this, it's of course, it's never just medication. Sure. Diet is one of the most important things. What type In, of diet? So intermittent fasting is one of the really good ones to decrease your VAT because when you don't eat, you don't need to digest, your insulin levels go down. And insulin is what helps us, is one of the hormones that helps us pack on the weight. So intermittent fasting I like. Avoiding pro processed or refined sugars and carbs. That's the problem in our it's society. In it's in everything. Fructose, high fructose corn syrop. Well, that's that's very American. 
Yeah, very American. You guys don't have that too much. Yeah, even, I'm sure there's some things that's renamed. Uh, it's yes, we, we named then all the processed uh, uh, refined sugars. So when it comes to nutrition, I think we all know what we should do. We need to eat less and eat real food. Stop eating stuff in boxes, in plastic papers, stuff that was touched by men. Not easy to do anymore. Everything is touched by, by men and is processed. But still paying attention to this is very important. Exercise, really important to help you lose that testosterone. And now we even have like a, a new protocol at our clinic to help patients lose belly fat, lose weight, but again, focusing on what? The semaglutide. Sem semaglutide, yeah. Semaglutide, which is now a great medication that is that, that was first a diabetes medication that now got FDA approval. What is it? Because it's I'm a biologic? Is it a... It, it is a peptide. So, so it is GLP-1 agonist. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide. And, and it is an intestinal hormone. So it is a peptide that they were able to synthesize. And it does the same thing. What it does, it slows down gastric emptying. So you have less hunger. And it binds, there are some receptors of GLP-1 in your brain that controls appetite and satiety. So when you do that, when you use GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide, you're less hungry, so you can eat less calories. So you're in a calorie deficit. Is there a rebound effect if you stop? Uh... Well, the first semaglutide, they studied it up to a year and a half, and they showed that the weight loss continued. Uh, in that study, it's called the Step 4 study. They did 20 weeks. Everybody on semaglutide did lose weight. After 20 weeks, they randomized the patients, and the patient who stopped semaglutide after 20 weeks started regaining some weight. The patients who continued lost weight. So semaglutide has now been approved as chronic management for long-term obesity. Uh, but there's, it's not a rebound effect. Unfortunately, weight loss is very difficult. Yeah, the psychological group. It does a lot of psychological, yeah. emotional. Yeah. Most of, I have a weight loss clinic also. Most people who come to my weight loss clinic, they know what to do. Yeah. They told me they could write a diet book. They've done every diet in the world. It's just when you're hungry, um, um, you know, you're emotional, you're stressed, you didn't have time to prepare foods, or you go out a lot, or you're sad, or you're happy, you yeah. eat more. Yeah. Although you know you should not. You eat more. Yeah, and lockdown especially. Lockdown, it's my lockdown God. It, it, it's, so if I can give you something that you're not as hungry, that your willpower is stronger, it's not, because it, a lot of times it's not your willpower, it's your hormones that affect your willpower. So if I affect your hormones positively, I affect your willpower positively, now we can get somewhere with your weight. Because uh, calories are the key when it comes to losing weight. You need to eat fewer calories. If you're hungry and have cravings, it's difficult. So semaglutide has been really good. And now we have another product called AOD9604, another peptide, which is the fragmented part of the HGH molecule, growth hormone molecule, that is the lipo lipo <laughs> lipolysis um, uh, for a growth hormone. So those 15 amino acids that they use with that peptide called AOD9604, it's the best fat burner. So we say fat burner a lot. What is a fat burner? Now, how do we measure fat burning or metabolism? It's difficult, but growth hormone, there's no question, induces lipolysis and reduces lipogenesis, the making of new fat cells. So because of that, it's the really, it's a pharmaceutical fat burner. So combi a combination of semaglutide and AOD helps our patient lose significant amount of weight, but more important, significant amount of VAT. Fat. It's not your weight, and not the fat. It's, it's your the VAT. VAT. It's the VAT. Let's talk about have, VAT. And you don't have to report to HMRC about it either. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that value added tax, loving it. Uh, well, as I ask, with, you know, in the UK, we, we do have semaglutide. Um, I don't know if it's a, 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 a Zempic. It's a Zempic. And, but, but there is no AOD. There are really no peptides no that peptides. have been approved for, for this use. Uh, wow. Tesmorelin uh, was a peptide that were, they, it has some weird uh, named only basis in Europe, but they, they didn't improve, uh, they didn't approve it because they said, oh, it, it bases IGF-1 too much. And, and they were trying to link the IGF-1 yeah. to cancer, but it's like, well, so does HGH raise yeah. IGF-1. That's what it's supposed to yeah. do. So again, yeah, I used point. to love uh, prescribing HGH yeah. when we were able to, because I trained with a clinic called Senegen. I worked, trained with a Senegenics yeah. with AMMG, so they did a lot of uh, AGH, yeah. no more because there's a lot more restriction. I like the peptides, but there are still questions whether increasing IGF-1 really may cause growth of, of cancers. The, the, the jury is not out yet, but there's no question that the AOD, because they removed all the other, they only took those 15 amino acids that are responsible for the lipolysis and lipogenesis. So that's the important part. You don't have the growth problem. So AOD, I'm surprised it's not, um, they don't use it in the UK. What in the FDA, they don't have a brand name. Okay. It's called AOD. Yeah. 
And I'm going to tell you, it got, it got the designation by the FDA of what we call GRAS, generally recognized as safe, G-R-A-S. Okay. FDA designated it as this because the side effect profile is so low. So it's really such an easy medication to take because I love prescribing this because the side effect profile is extremely low and you get most of the benefits of HGH without the, 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 the side effects. Okay. So now we have, so now let me tell you what my perfect program for a patient who comes to me who has more VAT than what I want them to do. And VAT again, uh, uh, tends to decrease the low T. So if a patient comes to me and has uh, VAT and high metabolic syndrome and needs to lose belly fat and have low T, the combination of testosterone replacement, semaglutide and AOD, give me six months with this patient and I change their life. I change their life physically, sexually, and meta metabolically. Amazing. And that's, then we've got a new guest. <laughs> we got a new guest. Come on, Maxi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, um, it sounds like this is <laughs> so, so, in conclusion, we've got some options, especially there's some tools here in, in the US that, that can help with losing fat, the uh, essentially the visceral fat uh, that you have that is responsible for so much inflammation. And, and reducing that fat will help reduce the inflammation through diet, through exercise, and through some um, pharmaceuticals that, that, that may help, some of which are available in the UK and some that are obviously here in the United States. So, yeah, thanks again, Dr. Everyone. So, don't forget, it's not about your weight, <laughs> it's about your VAT. Uh, about your VAT. So, <laughs> I love that. Confident with that. So, yeah, thanks again. It's been really a pleasure Thank uh, you. being with you today and look forward to maybe seeing you again. We might even do it on a Zoom. And, um, yeah, and, and everyone else, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave comments if you've had issues with, uh, with your vat, with your visceral fat and what you did to reduce it. Love to hear about that and we'll see you next time.